What is up everybody? Good morning and welcome back to today's vlog. Today we are going to talk about building reptile enclosures because well I didn't feel like buying one and I just got impatient and I was like I think I could build one just as good as any of the other companies can. So I want to show you an easy, I want to say pretty easy and pretty inexpensive way to build eight foot enclosures or something at least six foot and bigger uh, because those are the ones that seem to have the biggest shipping costs if you're looking to buy something from a company and have it shipped out to you. So this video is gonna be for the people that might wanna be a do-it-yourselfer. You might not be super confident, but I'm gonna show you this is pretty simple because I'm not the best builder. I'm not a carpenter in any way. Uh, I just kinda sat down and mapped this out and I think I built or came up with a game plan to build a pretty easy and functional enclosure that you could do at home. It's not gonna cost a lot of money and like I said, you don't need any special tools, you don't need any special equipment. You need like a jigsaw or circular saw to do like the lines if you don't have a table saw or a chop saw would also work too. So uh, let's get into this video and I'm gonna show you how to make these enclosures. Also we have an unboxing to do. We got a package from Campfire Arts and that was a giveaway that was done in conjunction with Superior Shipping Supplies and Miguel from Always Evolving Python. So we entered the giveaway, we won that. So that package just came. So we're gonna do the unboxing for that too to start this video off. So let's go downstairs, let's do the unboxing and let me show you these enclosures and how to build them. All right, so we're downstairs, we're gonna do the unboxing and it gives me like chills. I don't know if anybody else gets this way, but you know, we're over here building and this place is a disaster. So I'm just cutting everything downstairs. So like the floor's covered in stuff. There's wood and PVC everywhere. There's trim pieces everywhere. Just, and it gives me so much anxiety. So it's like I want to hurry up and get these things done and put together so that way we can start cleaning up and getting this room back together. So, all right, so as we get into this unboxing, um, a huge shout out also to Blackstone Labs for always hooking it up. Blackstone Labs, if you guys don't know, is a supplement company. It's owned by PJ Braun. So PJ is also into reptiles as well, if you didn't know that. He has a couple outdoor iguana closures that he told me he's going to be selling. Um, I think he has three of them. He might sell all three. And I think he's only used one of them so far. So two of them are like brand new, never used. But they're these big outdoor enclosures that have like a big full door that you could walk into. So if anybody's ever looking, I'll do an overlay so you can see what I'm talking about. But if anybody is in, he's in Florida. So if you're in like the Southeast, um, that'd probably be the best way. I don't think shipping might be an option. I'm not really sure. But anyway, go on Instagram and you could reach out to PJ if that's something that you might be interested in. Is just say, hey, I saw that you might be selling uh, or getting rid of. I don't, know, I don't even know what he's, how much he's asking for yet. So you could just do all that through him. But go check out PJ Braun and check out Blackstone Labs while you're at it if you don't know who that is uh, or that, what the company is. And ask him about the enclosure. So they, they are really big enclosures. So if you're in iguanas, if you're in a climate that allows outdoor things, uh, you know, like I said, especially the southern areas, uh, reach out to him and talk to him about that. So let's get into this unboxing. Uh, this is what we won from Campfire Arts. Like I said, it was a giveaway in conjunction with uh, Miguel from Always Evolving Pythons and Sh Superior Shipping Supply. They know what's up. Jack Savage in the house. I don't know if you guys have ever done this or not, but have you ever done the uh, what is your adult entertainment name? If you were to get into like the adult industry, what would your name be? Well, we figured out what mine is going to be. It's Jack Savage. So that's my, I think, like ulterior ego. Uh, so the name is so good that it just makes me want to get into the adult industry just to use the name for the sole purpose of I love the name. So Jack Savage might be the new name and that might stick. So let's get this unboxing going. Enough of the adult industry. Okay, so I finally got it out of the packaging. It was actually a lot harder to get out of the packaging than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it'd be like a quick, easy unboxing. Anyway, I got it out. This is a lot more insane than what I was expecting. I don't know, it, in person, it's so much more amazing. Uh, let me let me just show you. So this is a Medusa sword. Um, it's all the Medusa theme. And it's all like etched and burnt into the wood. This thing is so insane. It comes also with like a wall mounting kit. And these I believe are magnets if I remember them saying that correct. So the mounting kit, you just put two little like magnets on the wall. And then what you could do is this, there's a magnet inserted in here and here. And you could just take the sword and stick it up onto the magnet itself. So now we're gonna have to find a spot to put this in the room. Uh, and it shows you all back here, Campfire Arts. There, all their information is here. Uh, made in the USA. Superior Shipping Supplies, the AEP family's on there. It's also signed. This is number four of ten. And you have the artist right there, uh, Terry Venata. If I, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Venata. Terry Venata. So, this is the new sword that we just got. Even the detailing in the handles. 
the etch work, the leather stitching or the, the wrap, whatever that is, on the handle. And you've got the uh, the Medusa logo etched, engraved into the wood. So this is pretty insane. So Jack Savage has his weapon of choice now. We're ready to go to war. Let's find a spot on the wall. We'll hang this up at some point. Maybe the fish is to go. Maybe we get rid of the fish. Okay, so back on to building these enclosures, because I know a lot of people are gonna click on this video and they're gonna see there's other things other than the enclosure and they're gonna get miserable because they'll be like, oh, I have to watch the other stuff. Okay, so let's get into it. Let me show you, I did build one. And I built one just to see how it would even come out before I waste time trying to film it. So I'm gonna show you the one that we did and I liked it and I said, let's build a second one. So here's the first one. So if you follow along, this is what you could end up with. It has uh, sliding glass doors. So the overall dimensions, eight feet long by 30 inches deep. So from front to back of the wall, 30 inches. I'll explain why it's 30 inches in a minute. And it's 19 inches from the ground to the top. So the overall outside dimensions, 19 inches by 30 inches by eight feet. Okay, so let's go over the step-by-step -step build. So depending where you live, I have a Lowe's and a Home Depot next to my house. The build is done with PVC. It's half inch or it's also labeled as 12 millimeters. PVC, it comes in a sheet, four foot by eight foot. So you're gonna need two of those. And they also sold white PVC that were pre-cut into two foot by four foot pieces. So I bought two of those. So those would be for the sides and then the two sheets that you bought, the four foot by eight foot PVC, uh, that'll do the rest of the everything you need. So that's all of the PVC that you're gonna need. And I'm gonna try to show some clips of exactly what I bought, how much I paid, um, so you have all that information. But this is half inch, so I think they also sell quarter inch. That's gonna be too thin. It's cheaper, but it's too thin, I think. To build this, you're gonna need at least a half inch piece of PVC. And it's also pretty light, so when this whole structure is done, two people can move it around the house pretty easily. So, okay, let's get into it. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is just talk about how to build it, and I think I filmed a bunch of overlays. So this video should hopefully come out pretty good. So your first sheet that you got, that four foot by eight foot sheet, it's already eight feet long and it's 48 inches deep. So what you're gonna do is draw a line at the 30 inch mark. So you're gonna have a 30 inch by eight foot section and then an 18 by eight foot section. So if you make one long cut on that first sheet, you're gonna have an eight foot by 30 and then you're gonna have an eight foot by 18. So those are the first two pieces and all you're gonna do is draw a line. I used a jigsaw, I propped it up on some, I actually propped it up on some uh, extra rubber maids and I had a hand, a jigsaw. I didn't even use a circular saw. I used a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. You could probably use a regular wood blade. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's gonna be too aggressive. So I used a metal blade, it has tinier teeth on it, and you're also gonna need that to cut some of the aluminum framing too. So one blade should do the whole job. So a metal blade and a jigsaw, and I just ran it nice and slow right on that line. I, I did it the best I could. I don't have a big industrial table saw. I don't have table saws. I don't have any big cutting things. I used my hands. I just went nice and slow, stayed on the line. So one cut on that first piece of wood. All you're gonna do then is take those two pieces and screw them together. Uh, the 30 inch piece, that's gonna be your top section. And then the 18 inch section is gonna be the back. So you have the top and the back and you're gonna screw them together. Put little pilot holes, put your screws in there, just screw everything together nice and snug. That's your top and your back. So moving on. Now you have your top and your back, you're gonna do the sides. You're gonna use those two sections that you bought, the two foot by four foot, or if you don't have those, you might have to buy a third sheet of PVC. But you're gonna end up having to cut those, and I'm gonna put what the dimensions are for those two pieces. So if you cut them to the right dimensions that I put, those are gonna be your right and left wall, and you're gonna bolt them together. This is what it'll look like once you do. So this is that first piece that I said, the 30 inch by eight, and then here's the other piece. So we just cut it along this line, and then took this section and stood it up and screwed it together. So this is your one first piece of PVC screwed together. That two foot by four foot, we cut it here and then just screwed it along the side. Put the screws down this side and then we tilted the structure over and then put all the screws in here. So now you have your walls and you do the exact same thing on the side. So now you've got this, it looks like it's the bottom, but remember this is the top. So this whole thing is gonna flip over. So this is the top, your sides, and your back. So the only thing that you have left now is one big sheet of PVC. 
that's going to be your bottom and then that last piece that we have at the end when we when we cut this is going to be scrap so if you end up building a second enclosure like i did that piece that you just cut that scrap is now going to be filler for this piece next time on your next enclosure so your second enclosure is actually going to cost less money than your first one if you use the leftovers all right so some of the things that i did forget i started editing i realized i forgot to say i said that's all the pvc you're going to need i forgot you do need uh, three different pieces you're going to need a one by three by eight a one by four by eight and then a one by two by eight which is already on the enclosure and i'm going to show you what those are so these are just pieces of veranda or just white pvc trim they're eight feet long uh one inch by three inches one inch by four inch and a one inch by two inch so one by three one by four one by two and i'll show you how we're going to use those and also you need coffee at all times always need coffee Okay, so at my Home Depot, they sell the PVC. Lowe's doesn't for some reason. So all of the PVC related stuff I bought at Home Depot. When it comes to the plexiglass, I went to Lowe's. And the reason is Home Depot didn't have a size that I could really use. And also Home Depot doesn't cut the plexiglass or the glass. Lowe's does. So if you buy plexiglass or glass from Lowe's, they will cut it for you for free, which saves you from having to try to do it yourself or messing it up or whatever. So go to Lowe's for the glass. And like I said, I went to, you might be able to get all of this at Lowe's or maybe Home Depot if your Home Depot cuts it, but my Lowe's did not have any PVC sheets, so I had to go to both stores. So the glass, here's what I did. They had a piece of Plexi right here. It says 0 0.220 inches for thickness, so I guess it's like a little less than a quarter. And then the sheet is actually um, four feet long by two feet long, uh, four feet by two feet. And so what I did is I just asked them to cut it long lengthways, lengthwise, uh, directly in half. So now you have a 48 inch by 12 inch piece. You have two of those, and that's gonna be your door. But remember, you're, you know, some people will say, well, I want an enclosure bigger than 12 inches. Remember, just the glass is 12 inches, not your total enclosure. So you could change the height of your enclosure. Um, you know, you can make it way taller, um, but the problem is you're going to have to buy bigger pieces of sides and you're also not going to be able to use the back piece. So this way, the way that we built it is the most cost effective way so that you can make this enclosure for as cheap as possible. The next thing you need right behind the plexiglass. So this in Lowe's, this was on one aisle directly behind it. If you just turned around, um, there's this channeling and it's a half an inch thick. It's like U channel. So it's half inch thick. And both pieces of glass fit in there. So it's not like one channel per glass. It's just going to be one channeling and both pieces of glass will sit side by side in here. So this is half inch um, wide. So I bought two. They do come in eight foot pieces or a little bit longer than eight foot. So we will cut them. No, they are eight foot, but we're just going to cut them because we don't want them to be exactly eight feet. And I bought two, one for the top, one for the bottom. And they also sell this thin um, like half inch piece. And so I bought like a couple of them. So what I could do is actually put them down, uh, let's see, all the way down to the bottom. Because we're gonna screw this down. We're gonna screw this piece down, so I don't want the glass hitting the screw heads. So we'll put this down over the screws, like that, so the glass will have something nice to slide onto. And also you wanna create a little bit of a barrier so when you screw these together, the glass isn't buried to the bottom on both rails. And I'll show you what I mean, because that way you'll never be able to get the glass in and out. You wanna be able to take the glass in and out of the enclosure whenever you want to either replace it or clean it. So, so you're gonna need two of these pieces and then a couple of these. You might have to cut some of them to fit, but these were pretty cheap. I think these were like four bucks each maybe, five bucks each. Um, so that's it, so let's go. So next thing, take that one by two and just set it, remember this is gonna be the bottom, I mean the top of the piece. So that's actually your top track. So what we're gonna do is secure this piece, this, cut this to the right size, set it on top of the top and then mark and then also cut your track and then your track will sit directly on top of that and we'll screw it all together and then the top rack will all be done and here all you really need to do is just secure it with a screw on this side and then one on the far side just kind of tack it in place and then what you can do is flip it over and then screw down across the whole top of it uh, to keep it all nice and tight and then we can go ahead and put this track also if you're using that metal bit on this on a uh, jigsaw that's what's nice about this, it can cut right through this like butter. So that'll cut through this and this. So you only need one blade on your jigsaw to make this entire enclosure. So let's get this screwed in 
and then let's put the track down and we'll go over screwing that down. Now all we did was just set this track right on top here. I suppose you could glue it down and screw it if you want for like extra uh, security, but I really don't think you have to if you're screwing it in. So I just set it on top here and I'm just gonna put a couple pilot holes through the metal and then the screws will go right through there and then bite into that that one by two. So that top track will then be done and secure. Right, so we just secured the track. We put it like uh, three screws or four screws in the top of the track to put it down. Now we flip this thing up and now we're gonna secure this uh, one by two. Also, so when it comes to screwing everything in, people might ask what kind of screws. So for all of the PVC, like doing all the corners, we just did a number six uh, by one inch. So six is the thickness of the screw, one inch long. Then they're just flathead Phillips. And then also you're gonna need at the very end, uh, I'll show you what you're into these for. Eight, number eight, so a little thicker by two inch. I just couldn't find uh, number six, two inch, so we're just a little thicker. So number eight by two inch for the very bottom. So, and you'll need two of those. And while you're buying those, you also need this, the caulking in white. White caulking to water seal this whole thing. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure the top track and get that cut. So. We just kind of laid it down along here. I'm just going to eye it up and say that we're going to cut it right here. Just put two little marks on there. And then we're going to use that jigsaw with the metal blade and then cut that track. All right, so we have our mark here on this channel. All we're going to do is take our saw with our little blade, our metal blade here, and just cut straight across. All right, so we just cut this off, so that's the right length. Now what we're gonna do is take this three inch piece here. This is that one by three, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just measuring and cutting off this last little bit so it's the right length that we need. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we have our one by three right here in our track that we both cut, they're both the exact same length. So all we're gonna do is line them up and throw in about four screws and just secure this silver track on top of the one by three. And that's gonna be our bottom track now. So that's what's gonna create that three inch lip where if you wanted to put three inches of substrate or whatever you want, you can put that in here. So this is gonna be, the, the carpet is technically the floor of the enclosure, so you're gonna have a three inch lip and then that's where the sliders are gonna start. All right, so once you get the tracks in, you're gonna put the two pieces of glass in these bottom tracks, right down here. There we go. And then have a tiny little helper hold the two pieces of glass in spot and then just take this new track that you just screwed onto the wood set it on top and then all you're gonna do for now is just secure this put two screws in here just bring it out to the front put two screws just to hold it in place for now so it's just gonna be temporarily in place all right so we just put two screws one here one here so two on each side and that's just gonna hold that top track in place so it's just temporary there but it holds the glass in place so now you're starting to get take shape remember this is still upside down so the bottom piece that's on the carpet that's technically the top so let's move on what we're gonna do next is take this one by four by eight, and that piece is gonna go here. So when you step back, I'll give you a better picture, on the left and the right, we're just gonna put a piece of trim here. So if the door isn't perfectly shut, if you don't shut the door all the way over, that way you don't have room for the snake to escape. You have a little bit of safety net here if your door is not perfectly shut. So this is gonna be right behind the glass. So all we're gonna do is just cut it from the floor to match the exact top of the top trim. So again, we're gonna take that one by four, set it all the way down on the floor, and bring it up and just mark exactly the exact same height as this. And then we're just gonna screw it from backwards. So we'll screw the screws this way and this way, and same thing on the bottom track, one and two, and I'll show you how that looks. So when I measure that piece that we're gonna cut, it's exactly 16 and a half inches. So we're gonna cut that for here, and then same thing, we're gonna cut one for that side. Then we're also gonna cut a couple extra. Um, I believe we're gonna cut three more. So that way we'll have one here that's 16 and a half, one in the back corner that comes up 16 and a half, one in the center 16 and a half, one in this back corner 16 and a half, and then one up front. So it's one, two, three, four, five pieces. Five pieces, all of them are 16 and a half inches. Ready, let's cut them and put them in place. All right, so when you cut one, two, three, four, five pieces, you're left with this piece. It's 13 and I think a quarter inches. Save this, this piece is important. All right, so they're all in. So they're all cut. This one's in. There's one screwed in here in the back. We screwed one dead center in the back, one here and one here. Last thing we have to do now 
is just measure. So these are gonna be feet for the bottom. So when we set the piece down on top of this, it's gonna sit on top of all these little posts. And then what we can do is screw into the posts and be done. So let's do that. Let's measure. There it is. Let's measure from here to here. And then the inside from here to there. We're gonna cut that final piece, and that's gonna be the floor of the enclosure. So again, take your time, measure twice, cut once, make sure it's cut really well, and then set it on top, and we're gonna screw it down. Remember, if there's a little, say you cut this side, if there's little tiny like pieces that are off, if it's off just a little bit, it's no big deal, because we're gonna be using this caulking, and so that's gonna make it look good on the inside, and it's also gonna make it waterproof, so no air or water's gonna get through there. So. Don't be upset if it's not a perfectly straight edge, as long as it's pretty close. All right, so we just finished cutting this last piece. We measured it out, we put it on here. When you set it on here, it might also like, as you can see here, it doesn't like line up perfect. And all that's gonna do is because the PVC kind of moves a little bit, we can make the square, it's just because it's not sitting square. So once we start to secure these uh, this side down here and some along here, we'll then be able to take this push this end all the way in and squeeze this closed and then screw the rest of it and it'll pull everything in square. So the last piece is done. So what I wanna show you is, as you can see, this, remember this is upside down, this is the bottom. So this rests on the floor, so does that back wall and so does that side, but there's nothing in the front to take the weight of this. So what we're gonna do, if you remember, we have this 13 inch piece that we cut these are gonna become the feet. So what we're gonna do is cut them. I believe it's one and a half inches. I have to remeasure it. But we're gonna cut this and make feet as little supports to go around the edge and all around the front so that it looks like this. So as you see on the original one that we did, see how it has little feet along the front? That bottom piece right down here, that's just melamine, 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 whatever it is, that white, uh, wood that's covered in white ceramic or that white uh, coating. And I just put that on the floor just so the heat and everything on the bottom, just so the whole tank's not sitting on the floor. If you have like hardwood floor or something, you won't need that. But I just put a white piece on the bottom just to create like a base. But like I said, you see the little feet? Uh, there's one, two, three, four, and five. And then I have a couple along the back. So that's what that last little piece is gonna be. We're gonna cut them all to, I think it's an inch and a half. And just make a couple little pieces and screw them in so they're just so there's legs on the bottom of it all right let's do that and get that finished we're in the home stretch so next thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna screw this all in i'm gonna chop up that one last piece and put little feet all around the bottom and i'll show you that all right so here's what we did we finished screwing in that bottom piece we screwed it on this side all around that side and we screwed it in from the back and then we did a bunch down this bottom rail and then what we did when we took that last piece, I told you we're gonna cut it at inch and a half. I think it was, in, maybe it was like an inch and a quarter. I'll have to double check. Inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Anyway, you just wanna be the same length as this. So all you're gonna do now is have an even, uh, like, let's see. Let's So when we flip it over, if you pretend that this is the ground, you just have an even uh, height. So it all touches the ground evenly. So we just did, I didn't screw them in yet. But we did uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was all from that 13 inch piece that we had left over. So that's just using up the remainder of the scraps. So you don't have to buy anything else. And then that's where these longer screws come in. I remember I told you the two inch ones. Uh, I guess this would have helped if I held them that way. So number eight by two. And what we're gonna do is that way you can put the screw because this is now an inch and a half, put the screw all the way through the one inch, inch and a half, and you'll bury it in this piece here. And you could technically go longer and bury it all the way to here, but the back ones will be important because if you put a screw through the back ones, there's nothing on the bottom side of it. So you can't have the screw come out past this board. Otherwise, you're gonna, on the bottom, you're gonna have tips of nails popping through where the snake's belly's gonna be. So you have to make sure that you don't sink it in super deep. You wanna make sure it doesn't penetrate through this bottom board here. Okay, so the next thing is we bought this light. It's a three inch, I believe it's 36 inches. Yeah, three feet. And so I got it on Amazon for like 40 bucks. And it comes with double-sided tape, so you just put the tape on here. You'll peel this red piece off and just stick it to the roof. And then it's got two little screws that come with it. So one screw there, one screw there, and then it's got a plug on the end. 
So all you'll do here is when you plug this in, you'll turn the power button on and then you can put the plug into like a surge protector. So you're just turning the surge protector on and off whenever you want lights in there. And what's good is if the snake gets tangled somehow ever in the cord, uh, it'll just, it won't choke itself. It'll just pull out. And then that's uh, like kind of like a safety feature. So then it also has only a tiny little piece that has to come through the wall. So you only have to t drill like a tiny hole to feed the wire through to plug this thing in. So you don't have to plug a hole big enough for the whole outlet. So this is the light I use. This is the lights I put in down here. I put these, I put two small ones in the big six footer. Um, and then I put one, I think, in maybe in here. So, uh, yeah, so this, these work, these lights work rather well. So let's go screw one of these things in. I'm just going to put it, uh, like, um, I only bought one light first because I didn't know I was going to do two. So I'm just going to put this one in, um, and probably screw it up to the roof. You know, something like that in the back. And that should be enough light to kind of light up this whole cage. Because especially because it's white inside, I don't think it's going to take a lot to make that thing bright. So I think three foot is plenty. I was debating between two foot and three foot. I think three foot should be good. So we're going to go screw this up into the roof and then drill a hole out the back so that we can feed the wire in and plug it in. So let's get this lit up and I'll turn it on so that way you guys can see about how bright it's going to look. All right, so the light is in. It's really good light. Uh, it's hard to really kind of film it. You can see how dark everything looks around the tank because it's actually backlight the camera. So the lens, so the enclosure actually looks super bright right now. All it did was just kind of focus the camera on that. So it's, I would definitely say that's the perfect size light. 5K LED at three feet long. Again, it was $40 on Amazon. So that worked really well. Uh, one more thing think about too is uh, ventilation for this so I think it's a half inch drill bit and then all we're gonna do is just put some holes uh, you can do this however you want I'm just gonna put a couple holes uh, probably along like one edge here maybe just do like five holes down maybe five down in the center and then five on that end and then maybe a couple holes maybe on the side I'd rather do less in the beginning one of the other things that we have to look at too is um, you have to caulk the inside of this. So remember with that silicone caulking, uh, all I did was I ran like a bead along the whole edge. And then once I would stop, I would just take my finger and then just kind of like push it down into the crease and just push down and wipe away. And that just kind of pushes all the caulking down into that crack and smooths it all out. And I went around uh, all of the edges and then I also went up, let's focus here. I also went up about halfway. I mean, it's just the extreme thing. If water starts to splash around the sides, you build water or moisture up along the sides. It's just keeping all that out. I didn't go through and do the entire closure. I don't think you really have to. I don't think it's that imperative that you caulk all the top. I think it's just so that the moisture that maybe builds along the walls or if they spill their water in here, it's all waterproof so it doesn't leak and run down the sides and everything. This room is climate controlled, so this room's about 75 degrees at all times. So all I'm gonna do is do heat tape, like a flex watt. So I'm gonna take and run, I bought 11 inch heat tape. So it's almost about a foot. So I'll say about this long. And then I'm gonna run it about three feet down. So that's the good thing about having these little feet is you get the whole center if you're gonna heat tape. So I'm probably gonna heat tape, uh, I think three feet. I think start at one end, come down about three feet, and it's gonna be 11 inches wide. And I think that should give I think more than enough. I don't think I'm going to do half. I think I'm going to come in. So the half would be four feet. I think three feet would be good. So if I just run it out to about here. And we'll start with that. I think I bought it for about $8 a square foot or $8 a foot. So you're at $24. Worst case, if it's not long enough, I can always just take that, get rid of it and do a new piece and run it to the halfway point if I need, you know, when the snake gets bigger. That's where we're going to start. Uh, the heat tape didn't come in yet. I ordered that on Amazon as well. So heat tape, the uh, plugs uh, to like actually plug it in. And then I didn't know I was gonna build two of these things so I only bought one LED light. So the other LED light is on its way. It should be here like two days. I think it was Amazon Prime. But the FlexWatt and the plugs were not Amazon Prime. So that's it. I think the total cost, so I went through, I wanna say it's about 350 bucks. So you're looking at, you know, you go to some of the websites, um, like Animal Plastics, Reptile Basics. I think Reptile Basics only has six foot enclosures. I didn't see eight footers. And it's cheap. You could do some show pickups. 
but most of the ones that are about eight feet by 30 inches, I think I wanted to say were about maybe 500 bucks, 550, plus shipping. Shipping to my house was 250. Five, six, seven, eight, so about eight to nine hundred dollars for one of these. And I think I just built this for, I want to say 350 bucks. I think the glass and the tracks, when I bought all that at home at Lowe's, was maybe 125. And then the two pieces of PVC were 75 bucks each. And then I bought those two small two by four pieces. I don't know, maybe, maybe those were like 20 bucks each. 150, 200, plus the screws, the caulking. Let's say 250, 350, 360, under 400 bucks. 375 maybe on the high end. But then you save like 50 bucks on your second tank if you build two. So that's it. I think I tried to explain everything the best I could. If you have any questions, please email me. I'll try to do my best to answer it again. Uh, this has to just get flipped back over, but this is all done. And then this will get stacked up. I'm not going to stack it yet because I still have to put heat tape in this one and drill ventilation in both of them. So that is it. So if you like this video, if you found this video helpful, I would really want you to comment down below. If anybody ever builds this to the same replica I did and copies this design, please send me pictures, send me an email. I'd really love to see it. And I want to know your feedback. If something was wrong or I said something wrong in the video, let me know and I'll try to fix it ASAP. Um, otherwise, I hope everybody enjoys their day. If anybody was looking for eight foot enclosures, I hope this saves you a couple bucks and you could see that it really doesn't. If you're gonna build a lot of them, just buy a jigsaw. Jigsaws are like 40 or 50 bucks sometimes at Home Depot for like, I don't know, like a cheap one and it's gonna do the job. So, you know, if you wanna do this yourself, you don't have a jigsaw, just go buy one for 50 bucks. Use it, make a bunch of them and you're gonna get your money's worth out of it. So that is it. The berms are gonna have a new place to stay pretty soon because they're growing pretty fast. And that is it. Maybe I'll build like two more. Maybe we'll go four of them high, who knows. So stay tuned. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. And again, smash that like button. I will catch you guys in the next video. This video is long enough. I'm out of here and I'm tired. So peace out everybody. Let's go.